Can you tell us what you think dreaming is? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so what really stands out in our brains, and this is true across the animal kingdom, but especially with humans, is the amount of plasticity that we have, meaning the brain's always reconfiguring itself. Okay, so what we know, for example, is that if somebody goes blind at birth, the visual cortex at the back of their head gets taken over by other sensory areas, by hearing, by touch, and so on. So the system is you know, quite fluid in terms of what the territory is coding for. Okay, well, here's the surprise. In 2013, some of my colleagues at Harvard did an experiment where they blindfolded people and put them in a brain scanner for one hour. And at the end of the hour, they started to see that the visual cortex was responding to sound and to touch. And so you could see little responses in the visual cortex, which means that the beginnings of that takeover were more rapid than anyone ever thought it could be. And my student and I were looking at this and we started thinking about what does this mean that we live on a planet that rotates into darkness for half the time? And obviously during evolutionary time before the invention of electricity, it was really dark when you rotate into darkness. That puts the visual system at a disadvantage. You can still hear and touch and taste and smell in the dark, but you can't see. And so we realize that every night the visual system is in danger of getting encroached upon by the other senses. And so what you have is this very ancient circuitry that goes across the animal kingdom that blasts random activity into the visual cortex every 90 minutes. And because we are visual creatures, we experience that as a visual dream. But that's all dreaming is. And if you look at the circuitry, you've just got these midbrain neurons, these very ancient neurons that are just blasting activity right here into the back of the head, and that's it. It's not going anywhere else. And so uh, it turns out dreaming is just the brain's way of defending the visual cortex against takeover. It's it's a screensaver. And, and, and what happens is whatever synapses are hot from the day, those tend to be more activated. But the constraints for how the information flows, you know, it's not particularly strict uh, when you're asleep. And so, you know, things go off in weird, bizarre plots. Um, and then, you know, of course, we wake up and we say, my God, this thing happened. And we assign meaning and we make interpretations and so on. But it's actually just random activity to, to keep the system going. I, I told this to a couple of friends of mine and they could not, they refused to acknowledge it because they put so much value into it. <laughs> 